We do still have a few stragglers coming in. Um, do you get alerted when they come in, Amanda? Are you able to see that? I do not. I see that we have 65 participants, which is awesome. I don't know if maybe you want to start sharing your screen um, with the PowerPoint for right now so that then I can let others come in as they're being admitted or I'm sorry, oh. as they're as they're chiming in um, so that then I don't have to reduce. You know, got another one coming in. Sure, um, but I am not the host, so I don't have the. Ability. Oh, OK. <laughs> one second. Are you able to now? Yes, thank you. Okay. All right. Well, again, good afternoon, everyone. We're gonna go ahead now and get started. Can I, I get just a couple people to confirm that you can see my screen with the presentation? Perfect. Got some thumbs up. Thank you, I love that. We'll click present. Uh, so I've already welcomed everyone to, to this afternoon's 2021-22 Section 99H Robotics Competition Grant Program Technical Assistance. That is a mouthful. So if you're not here to learn about the Robotics Competition Grant, then you're probably in the wrong webinar. But if you are here, you're going to get a lot of great information today on how to apply for these state dollars. I am Amanda Sewell. I'm with the Michigan Department of Education. And I have some exciting news to share with everyone. Uh, this is my last technical assistance meeting for the 99H grant. Um, I have had an amazing time serving as the grant administrator for this grant, but I've just recently taken a promotion here at MDE. So I'll be handing the torch to Ashley Aris. She's on the call with us today, along with Anne-Marie Mates, who is the manager of the Office of Systems Evaluation and Technology. You are in great hands. Um, I asked them if I could please do this last technical assistance so I could spend one more <laughs> TA with all of you and the program <laughs> providers. No, I, um, I will be helping transition and so I'll be there if there are questions. Yeah. But your primary point of contact is Ashley, go. and her information will be shared later in this presentation. All right. So this afternoon, we're, we just did a couple of welcome, um, and we're going to do some introductions. I mentioned Ashley and Anne Marie. Would either one of you also like to share any welcoming comments? Uh, yeah, hi everyone. Again, as Amanda introduced me, my name is Ashley Aris, and I'm a department technician here at the Michigan Department of Education in the Office of Systems Evaluation and Technology. Um, I've been working with Amanda for the past two seasons, um, kind of just in the background, help, helping with the technical aspects um, and more like the administrative work. So now um, I'll be working with Anne Marie and getting involved in more of the process. So it was great working with Amanda for those two years. I'm very sad to see her go because she is taking a lot of knowledge with her. Um, but I do appreciate Amanda, you taking the time to come to this technical assistance webinar. I know the districts um, will really appreciate the knowledge that you bring to your final session today. <laughs> Yeah, and again, um, my name is Anne-Marie Mapes and I'm the manager of the Educational Technology Unit. Um, we're sad to see Amanda go, um, but excited to continue to, to work on this great grant with all of you. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and ask Ashley to, to mute folks who haven't been muted yet again for that reminder. Um, we're gonna keep you on mute until the end unless you have some questions that arise and please do use the chat function there um, to ask some questions. Thank you. We also have some key program providers on the line with us. We'll share more about each one of the programs that are available for funding as part of this grant a, a later, later in the presentation. So I, I want them to know we're not skipping over them, but just to keep things moving, we will do introductions of program providers close to the end where they will each have an opportunity to share with you briefly about their programs and the competitions that they offer. So with that, are there any other MDE team members on today's call? I don't want to miss anyone. No. Okay. I don't believe so. No, I, I look. Great. Um, so we're going to take a little bit of time uh, to review all of the resources you have 
Ashley being one of the primary resources, um, but there are definitely others that you can use. So we'll walk through those. We're going to walk through the grant requirements for today and what the structure of the application is and the design. It hasn't changed a ton, but there have been some new additions and we are always trying to continuously improve and make things easier for the field. So I will point out what those changes are. Um, Ashley's gonna do a demonstration of the application in Nexus. It is the demo site. We are still working on some bugs. So bear with us during the demonstration today. If we hit some of those bugs, we will be recording what they are and working with the programmers to fix those. We'll also be sharing uh, an update on the timeline for when the grant application will be released. And um, Ashley will go through all of that in a bit. Um, as I mentioned, we'll do some program provider specifics. They'll each have a turn to share information on their programs. We do have one new program provider that could not be with us today. We'll just quickly highlight that program at the very end as well. And then we'll open it up for question and answers. And it's already been stated, but I, I don't want to um, gloss over that you can absolutely use the chat between myself, Ashley and Anne Marie. We will try to respond to questions throughout the presentation as well. All right, so I'm gonna keep going. We have a wealth of resources on our grant website. It is the techplan.org site. When you come to that website, you're gonna look under EdTech Initiatives and look at grant programs and then click First Robotics. On that webpage, you're going to see historical documents from prior year's grant applications. That just gives you a little historical context but what you're really gonna to wanna to focus in on is this year's request for proposal instructions or what we also call an important information document. That document is going to give you a ton of information on what the grant design is, um, who is the primary contact, all of the grant assurances and certifications, what components are necessary for completing the application, the timeline and, and other components. Um, Ashley, what am I missing? I feel like I'm missing something that's in that document. <laughs> I think yeah, I think you about summed it up. Um, the our, the request, request for proposal is already posted on the website. And after our session, um, probably tomorrow morning, I'll get the student roster and the step-by-step -step document up there. So at least um, for those of you that like to go in and just review and keep it fresh in your head, that will be on the website. Perfect. Thank you, Ashley. Uh, as I mentioned, you also have resources in all of the program providers. So you're gonna be working really closely with them once you've selected which program you're gonna participate in. Um, we'll identify who those contacts are, but links to their website, which have instructions on how to register a team, um, the scope of the project, all of the requirements for the competition when competition schedules are, can be found on the program providers webpage and we have a link to their websites here in the PowerPoint, but also on our website. So you'll be able to find all of their information as well. All right, what is the purpose of the grant? So 99H has been around since 2013, I believe. <laughs> Don't hold me to that date, but it's definitely been around for several years and it has grown substantially. Um, from starting out with only one program provider, uh, providing competitions to only high school students, to expanding now this year to at least four program providers with a full pre-K through 12th grade comprehensive programming for, for students. And the purpose of our grant has not changed over those years. Though so we've grown and expanded the eligibility and the primary focus of the grant, it has always been in order to increase the number of students performing in science and mathematics, as well as ready for college and career. And this supports our State Board of Education's mission and our new Michigan Top 10 Strategic Education Plan. Specifically, the goals to ensure that we're providing more students secondary um, learning experiences. And um, it's in my notes and I'm blanking now <laughs> what the other goal is. Um, here, we're just gonna do this real quick. 
you're going to see my notes, um, expand secondary learning opportunities for all students and increase the percentage of all students who are graduating from high school. So we believe strongly that by having access to hands on experiential learning, that's going to, and the re there's research behind it that shows um, that that leads to and contributes to those goals. So that is one the purposes of this grant application. Um, I think I touched on that second one as well. So it's supporting our students in pre-K. That is one of the changes that I want to call out this year is that preschool programming is now eligible as part of this grant. So who is eligible to apply? Well, our local education agencies are our first eligible applicant. Those are any school district across the state. Then we have our public school academy. They're also eligible to apply for these fundings in the Nexus system, as well as intermediate school districts. And most recently, we've added registered non-public schools. So non-public schools must be registered with the state of Michigan. That is simply so that we have a mechanism for getting the dollars from the state to those non-public schools. It is a separate pot of money. Um, I'll highlight that during the financial component or the budget component of today's presentation, but they are uh, also eligible to apply for funding. Now, I know we have several school districts that work with community-based agencies. The school district or the public school academy or the ISD still has to be the entity that is applying for funds, but they can then contract out um, with those community-based organizations to provide the services to their students. So the students must reside in that school district who, that is applying. We also have consortias. So let's say an intermediate school district that is also um, an, a, a career tech ed center, Kent ISD, for example, they're pulling in and drawing students from several school districts across their service area. That ISD is the eligible applicant and will be applying on behalf of that subset or that set of students. I'm gonna just pause right there because I've just given you a lot of information on the purpose of the grant and who is eligible. Um, are there any questions that are popping up in the chat? So we did have one come in um, to non-public schools complete their own application. And yes, you would, um, each district would complete their own application and the funds are drawn from separate pots of money. And again, we'll go over those pots and how much funding we have in a moment. Thank you. Anything else? Or is that the only one? Nothing else in the chat. Um, but if you have a question, again, feel free to throw it in there. So there are specific requirements laid out in legislation as well as through MDE's program office, that is OSET. Um, the grant requirements that are defined in legislation specifically state that a district must demonstrate that they have a partnership. This lends to helping to be sustainable programs. So a partnership must be between the fiscal agent, who are any of those eligible applicants that we just identified, and at least one either business and community partner an institute of higher education or a technical school. So those are the three entity types that can be partnered. You can have more than one partnership, but as, as far as the requirements go within the application, and we'll show you this during the demonstration, you have to identify in the application at least one partner to each team. So every team has to have a partnership. It's also okay if every team has the same partner, so let's say you're partnering with GM, you just have to enter GM for each team. It's a little bit redundant, but it does help us verify for the legislation uh, that all school districts and all teams have met that requirement. Uh, also in statute, you must submit a budget in the years past. This is one of those changes I wanna call out. In years past, it was a spending plan. So those of you who have done this grant many times, you're probably thinking, hey, Ashley just talked about the resources that are gonna be on the webpage and the student roster was there, but not the spending plan. <laughs> That's because Nexus 
budget pages are right in the application. So we didn't need a separate spending plan created and uploaded. So this year, that's where the change comes in. You will be submitting an actual budget in the system and you'll have a budget page for each team. And as Ashley gets into the demonstration, we'll show you what that looks like and how you'll be entering that information. Um, and then last, within statute, each school district, each team must agree to pay at least 25% of the cost of the total grant award. So um, that can be an in-kind contribution or it can be dollar for dollar match. And match can then come from either fundraising, it can come as a donation from one of your established partners, um, or we'll talk more about in-kind contribution in just a bit. Oh, we did have a question pop up in the chat. Um, what, can you define partnership when, when you're talking about partnership? Um, does it have to be a, a required financial element? It does not. So it does, your partners don't have to provide a financial contribution. The partnership could be time. So for example, when I said GM, their engineers could come in and provide support to your students during the build session, helping them to do engineering. It could be computer scientists from local firms. That's your partnership who are coming in to provide that. So they have to provide some form of resource. It doesn't have to be money. It could be the time. It could be space. So maybe it's a community partner that opens up their facility and gives them space to do the build if they can't build in the school, for example. Um, most of our teams do build in the school, but that's just an example of something that it could be. Okay, thank you. And that's all we have in the chat right now. Um, grant requirements specifically by the Department of Education proposed by our staff in the OSET office um, is identified as that each applicant must be registered. We want to validate and verify that you are working with one of our program providers and that you have a current team and name and a coach. We want to make sure that our students um, have supportive, caring adults with them at all times. Um, so these are the requirements that we have put on this grant. Um, you have to participate. That is the end goal, not only the journey that our students have in learning, but that they have an opportunity to demonstrate the mastery of the competencies that they're learning as being a part of this program. So you have to participate in a competition. Um, and you there, that's the minimum is one competition. Um, if you want to advance to through the program provider structure, you may need to participate in more than one competition in order to advance to say a regional competition or state competition or even the world competitions. And that's gonna fluctuate by program provider. So they'll share that structure with you at the end when we give them time to talk specifically about that. Um, we also want to ensure that, and this one's a little wishy-washy, um, be willing to offer elective high school credits. So as our goal is to ensure that increase of um, secondary learning experiences, if your school district is looking at credits, selective credits, that you're willing to offer those to, your, to those high school students. You don't have to, but we really ask that you look at exploring and show the students that you recognize the work that they've done by offering them that credit. Um, same thing goes for the willing to participate in digital badging. Um, several of our program providers have a badging system in place now. Um, so explore that opportunity for your students. It's extremely beneficial for them to receive either the credits or the badge and be able to show that to prospective employers or as they are starting to look to, uh, to enroll in college or universities. And then lastly is to provide that electronic roster. We are using that data in an aggregate fashion in order to provide additional supports across the state, uh, as well as um, looking at ensuring the equitable distribution of these dollars and resources to students across the state. So those are the requirements. All of these items will be identified in the actual application. Um, so as you're filling it out, you will be checking the boxes 
um, in providing us this information to validate as part of their grant requirements. Ashley or Anne-Marie, anything you want to add up to this point or are there any questions? I don't have any questions that have come in, um, any new questions. Um, I think you're covering it pretty well with those eight plus years of experience. So this year is going to be highly competitive. We have a lot of really great program providers and we have school districts that are um, wanting to provide a lot of new or engaging activities for their students. This is a competitive grant application and in order to provide a competition or a competitive criteria, We've done that here and this will help us prioritize and identify which teams will be funded. That does mean that we will have some winners and some losers, unfortunately. We can't fund everybody. Um, we have in the past tried to distribute money uh, across every team and we do have a scaled funding structure for sustainability. So rookies, uh, as you can see right here, the third priority, first time teams participating they're going to be prioritized a little bit higher. We're going to be looking at our economically disadvantaged populations, looking at CEPI and, and those da data points. We're going to be pulling and looking at our high percentage of low income families. We're going to look at districts who are establishing feeders. So if you've already got a high school uh, program established and now you're starting a middle school or you're starting elementary or you're starting preschool, those are feeder schools up into the higher programs. So that, um, that criteria will also be used to rank. And then we're going to also look at the geographic distribution across the state to make sure that we are getting teams grown and built in places that haven't had teams before and um, ensuring that equitable distribution across the state. So those are indicators that Ashley and the team will be pulling in and using to review the grant applications that come in and prioritize them for funding based on the dollar requested in the budgets. So though it is going to be highly competitive this year, I'm also excited to share that the amount of funding has increased this year. So last year we had $4.5 million. This year we've got $4.7 million and change, kind of an odd number, but we'll take it. We'll take every penny. <laughs> it's always been my goal, and I hope to pass this along to Ashley, that every dollar we receive goes out to schools to be used to support programming. And if there's any funding, I believe last year we did what we call here at the department a, a, a work a work plan. Um, and that's simply for us at MDE to carry over any money we didn't spend in that prior fiscal year. We had about $10,000. Our finance office comes back to me every year and says, Amanda, do you really wanna do paperwork for $10,000? $10, and I said, absolutely. Do you know how many teams and students we can get served for $10,000? It doesn't sound like a lot to you because you're dealing in millions, but for us, that $10,000 can serve a lot of students. So um, I just wanted to share all of that with you that yay, we've got additional funding and uh, MDE is committed to getting those dollars out to support those teams and those students. I shared already that we do have a separate pot of money. Uh, state aid dollars are for the public schools. General fund dollars are for non-public schools. They do go out in two different financial systems. We'll highlight that here in a minute. But uh, $600,000 is what we have available for all of our non-public schools. Amanda, um, we did have a question come in. Um, and maybe you can give more clarification. If we circle back to... Um, one more slide um, about the, um, it says, will the application have the opportunity for us to enter in this type of information or where will the Michigan Department of um, MBE find it? Uh, so as far as uh, the schools that serve higher percentage of low income families, um, it, this is where MDE would have that information, correct? Because there's, there's not a spot to enter that in Nexus. Correct. Each one of these criteria rankings are not, we are not putting that burden on school districts to find that. 
we have all that data through CEPI, the Center for Educational Information Perf Performance Information. I always say their, their <laughs> acronym wrong. Um, they are our data gurus. We go to them and we pull that data. If it's um, with CEPI, it's in one of their systems. We'll also look at the Educational Entity Master, um, but we will gather that data from a primary source. So school districts do not have to do that. As far as uh, first time participating in um, participating teams, we will verify that with the program providers. We verify that by looking at historical applications because we have team numbers. So we validate everything through a team number um, or the team name. And we will look historically at that. All of our program providers keep those records. And so we validate that point with them. Um, same thing with the feeder schools. We take a look at historical applications and we'll be able to pull that data into the spreadsheet or our master list. Um, as far as geographic distribution, there's also coding within EEM on what size the district is and where the location is based on zip code. So we'll use that as well. Thank you. And then um, how is this information found for non-pubs? Um, that's why they have to be a registered entity. So not okay. so that we have these pieces. Of okay. Yep. Thank you. All right, what's the grant structure? So legislation lays out three buckets of money. The first one is the coach stipend. Um, this is actually a coaching stipend. So here's one of the changes this year. I think there's a slide coming up, so I'm not gonna touch it here, but I will uh, hit on that in just a minute. The third or the second bucket, my apologies, the second bucket of funding is for support awards. Those dollars can be used for your event registrations with the program provider, your materials, travel costs. And then the third is an advancement award. The advancement award, um, again, I think I've got a more deep slide on that in just a moment. So let's go here into coaching stipend. The coaching stipend is for salaries only or a contract with an individual. This is intended to reimburse or to um, ensure that your coaches are being rewarded for their work with the students. There's a word and it's on the tip of my tongue and I can't think of what it's called. Um, but this, this award in the past was specifically for one coach. It has to be paid out to an individual. It cannot be redistributed into another one of the three pots. The coach has to receive this money. You can in the application say, no, I don't want it. Um, but what we've done this year is we've opened it up. Instead of calling it a coach stipend for one individual, it's now coaching. So many of our programs, not they have multiple adults supporting this, the students, whether it's a coach and an assistant coach or coach and mentors, there's different structures that can be used. But what we do is now this opens it up, the school district, the autonomy, to use the fit up to $1,500 per program per building that coaching stipend to provide those funds to those individuals, those adults that are working with it. Here's, we've provided some examples of what that might look like. Say you have two coaches in the same building. One is participating in the VEX robotics. One is competing in, in square one. It's the same coach for both teams, but two awards are issued because it's two different programs, which means they've got twice as much time. They're teaching all of the VEX curriculum and they're teaching all of the square one curriculum. They're participating in different PDs, et cetera. Example two, you've got two teams in the same building, both participate in FTC. They have the same coach. This one only gets one award because it's just twice as many students, but the coach is still doing all of the same activities. So it is not a double dip. Or example one would not be a double dip. This would, example two would be a double dip. Example three, let's say you have three teams, one in an elementary, one in middle school, one in high school, all our first robotics. They have the same coach for all three teams. There would still be three awards issued because you've got the progression of 
programming. And our last example, I couldn't remember how many examples we had. Example four, we've got two teams in the same building, one's sex, one's first. Each team has one coach and two mentors. You provide two awards will be issued by the Department of Education. The district has the autonomy to divide that award up amongst the coach and the mentors, however they see fit based on whatever contract negotiations um, you've done with those individuals, whether they're teachers on salary and it's part of their union agreement, or if you have a separate contract with them as a uh, service provider. And lastly, this award has to have a 25% match. So if example, you get the $1,500, 25% is $375, there might be background checks, there's FICA and, and social security that has to be paid, the school district could use those as the match for the coach stipend. Oh, there's that example, you can see MDE stipend award plus the match equals a total of $1,875 that should be paid out by the school. Some is coming in from MD, some is coming from other sources of, of match. All right, any questions on that one before I jump into the support award? Uh, yep, if we go back, um, they would like clarification why example two is one award and not two. That is because it is per program per building. So the two teams are in the same building and they're both participating in the same program. So it's not a different program. Did that help clear that up? I believe so, Leah. If it doesn't help, please let me know. Um, and, and then just to clarify, the stipend match can be in kind as well, correct, from the district? Okay. It could be, yes. And that's all we have for right now. Again, Leah, if that doesn't clarify what you're looking for, just let us know. Support awards can be used to pay for your registration, event materials, any travel costs, um, kids get hungry, <laughs> you need to bring in some pizzas during a build session or once they're at competition, you can use those dollars for that tools to build, 3D printers I've seen. Um, so anything that supports the team in getting to their goal of competing. Um, Promotional items, I love when I've gone to robotics competitions and I come home like covered in buttons <laughs> or my water bottles now covered in new stickers. Um, so they're promoting, promoting their, their teams because that is an aspect of a lot of the program providers curriculum is how they market and present their, their build, their robot and how they're competing and what they learned during that time. Those are some really amazing 21st century skills. So, um, all of the amounts are listed in the RFP. It was, we've added so many new programs and different levels. We have that listed in the instruction. So if you're, um, let's say FRC team for first robotics and you're a rookie, you're gonna get a lot, um, you could potentially get more funding because you're a rookie team versus a veteran team. Um, all of our program providers have identified a base rate. Uh, that does not mean that that is what we're going to award you. That is a base rate and a financial structure. You will not get more than that. You will get up to those dollar amounts. Um, we saw with COVID a lot of changing and variable costs. First, we thought, well, they won't need as much money because they're not traveling, teens aren't traveling. But then we saw that they did need to increase their dollar amounts because they wanted individual kits for every student versus one kit that was um, everyone was working on together so that we weren't having to sanitize things all the time. So that's why the budget is so important this year. You will be able to articulate to the department exactly what funds you need. We even had some school districts call last year saying, I don't want this full amount of money. I don't need this much money. Um, can we request a lower amount of money? Absolutely. And then that helps distribute it further across the state as well. Um, so that's why I'm really excited for the budget this year. So we can get a more accurate picture of what funding is needed. But we have set that base for you because we do want to make sure you have enough dollars to implement some really strong, high quality programs. 
I'm kind of looking at Ashley to see if there's any questions on that. Nope. Okay. <laughs> Gergen, um, well, I'm sorry. I just had something come in. Um, did those get updated? That's what the person is asking, or Barb asked that. Or, I'm sorry. Um, I believe, oh. Ashley, you did update those. Okay. Yep. I'm sorry. I was just reading the question before I even have a chance to answer it. Um, advancement award. So this is a third bucket. This award does not go out until May. So what we will do, like I said, this year is very, com very competitive. Those first two awards will be um, announced and shared. And if there's any funds left over, we will keep that pot of money back at the state until May when we receive lists from all of our program providers of which teams are advancing to states or uh, advancing to nationals. Every team that advanced to one of those levels of competition will receive an equal amount of money that will be used for um, supporting them attending that level of competition. So whatever travel they have uh, to get there, I said hotels, buses, um, Thankfully, we've, for some of our world competitions, they were right here in Detroit, so we didn't have to fly, but maybe there's, there's airline um, costs. So anything that is customary and reasonable for advancing can be used. We tend to start looking at those lists from the program providers around um, mid-April, early April, and then we process those. We will contact all the school districts that are on one of those lists, notifying them that they will be receiving an advancement award, how much that advancement award is, and we will be sending your grant application back to you through the Nexus application so that you can go into your budget and you can add another line item for those particular teams to update the budget with your uh, um, updated award amount um, so we can keep record of that. In years last year, we did not have funds for advancement because we chose to pay it all out because we really wanted to focus on our students having access to the experience because of COVID. Um, this year, I'm hopeful that things will change and we will have kept back some funding to pay for advancement awards. But that is yet to be seen. <laughs> Um, I did have, because um, I know, again, we didn't have a advancement awards last year, so I didn't work with that. So I have uh, someone in the chat asking why FTC only for advancement awards? Nope, all, all program providers okay. will receive funding for advancement. I'm, okay. I, as an example, my apologies. Okay. okay, thank you for the clarification. Yep. Good question, though. Call me out on those. Um, funds, as Ashley mentioned earlier, will come out in two different systems. If you're a non-public school, your payment will come through an electronic funds transfer through Sigma, which is the financial contracting system here at the department. Our, our public schools, ISDs, and uh, local education agencies, all our school districts, they will receive a monthly payment through the state aid management system or SAMS. Your business office staff familiar with the system. We are anticipating that the first award will come out in February to all schools that receive an award. And that first payment in your state aid system will be 511s. It comes once a month with the exception of September, because September we're closing out books and everything. So that's why it's 111th instead of 112th. You will, school districts will receive 111th payment for the additional months each, each month. It's usually on the 20th or the 21st of the month. Advancement payments, as I mentioned, we usually get the list and start to validate in April. We've got the list um, and we will start to process in May and you will get 811th in the first state aid award and then 111th after that in June, July, and August. These key dates were just updated by Ashley because she was just in contact with the Nexus team. Um, the RFP instructions are up on our website. As we mentioned, we are hosting our technical assistance webinar today. 
Unfortunately, we are still to be determined on when the application is going to go live. Um, we will ensure that there is a four to six week application window. It will be due by midnight, the night that is identified as the due date. As soon as those applications close out, we take a three, three day window to do what we call cleanup. Um, that cleanup in the grant application review happens. Cleanup is any technical assistance or question that came in that we couldn't get to we will follow up on before we just eliminate an application. We wanna give you time to make sure that all information is accurate before we hand it off to the review team. The review process will happen where we will pull all of the data for the criteria ranking and they'll start to go through that process that is uh, articulated in that RFP document as well. Um, Grants will then be announced as soon as we get approval from the state superintendent's office, and then awards will be made via the state aid management system or SIGMA. Um, it will be done usually the very next month um, because of the way that the financial process happens. So if those all come in and we get approval from the superintendent on January 30th, we probably won't have time to process in, in SAMS, um, so the payment will actually be push, pushed to March instead of February. But that is, as I said, yet to be seen. There were some bugs in the application that the programmers are trying to fix. Um, Ashley, do you have any other updates besides that? No, not as, as of right now. We just got that news today, unfortunately. We were hoping to have it a little sooner, but again, like Amanda said, we will give you still that four to six week window because with the holidays coming up and you all will probably not be in the office working. So we just want everyone to still have the time um, to get in there and get those applications filled out. So as soon as I have an update, I'll update the RFP, which again is on our website. Thanks, Ashley. Um, so I'm gonna keep moving because I'm doing a time check and I probably talked too much, but I wanted to make sure you had all the information. The application process is to apply in the new Nexus system. There's one application per district. So if you're a district that has 20 teams, even if it's um, five robot, uh, five first teams, five VEX teams, five square one teams, and five mate teams, all teams go into one district application. Um, so note, note that uh, each team must have their team and sponsor page. If you were with us historically, this is one of the updates. There was a team page and a sponsor page separate. It always caused confusion. So this year it's all in Nexus on one single page. So that is an update that we hope is gonna help streamline some of the frustrations from last year. Um, the budget is, is new in the system and there's still a student roster upload. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Ashley to do a Nexus demo in our, um, QA environment or our, our, our testing environment. <laughs> so fingers Thank crossed. You. Thank you. Let me go ahead and get my screen shared. Stop sharing. Let's get okay. So um when you oh let me go ahead and minimize some of this. I apologize for that. Okay, when we get into, um, when you first get into the lo logged into the application, this is what you're going to see. Over on the right hand side, you have my opportunities listed. And when the grant opens, you will see 99H listed under my opportunities. Um, and then over to the left here, um, I'm sorry, I think I said, so this is the right, my opportunities. And then over to the left, we have my tasks. And so once you initiate the application, um, it will show up under my tasks so that you can save it, you can come back to it later. Um, so again, any new grant opportunities will be listed under my opportunities. Anything, any grant applications you have started will be listed under my tasks. So I'm going to come over here and I am going to initiate the application. Oh, give me just a moment. Let me go ahead and 
unshare for a moment. I'm timed out. Ash While Ashley is getting logged into the my login, that reminded me to let all of you know, and your your office business office staff in school districts probably have already linked their old MIS account to the new my login system. But if you have not, I highly recommend you do that. That will save you some time in making sure you can access Nexus. So that was another system security um, practice was to have a MIS account ID that was used. We've now switched over to my login. So just make sure that you've done that connection so you can access Nexus. It will be the same. So what you do is you'll go into the system and me, sorry, there was a question in the chat. I probably should share it with everyone what the question is real quick Well, before Ashley pulls it up. The question is, is our login from this system the same as NICE or will we receive a new login information? It will be the same. So that's why there's a connection between NICE to my login is that you go in and you say, yes, I want to pair these so that it connects. Then you'll be able to use, it'll be the same login and password. It's just now NICE and uh, next, or NICE and my login have connected and, and are authenticating and validating that you are you and can use that same uh, password and login. Okay, sorry, Ashley, back to you. Oh, that, okay, perfect, thank you. Sorry about that technical difficulty there. Um, okay, again, under my opportunities, we're gonna go ahead and click on 99H. We're just gonna review this information um, and click proceed. And this will take us into the actual application. Um, we're just go. We're just going to go over a few things here. Amanda, if I miss anything, please feel free to interrupt me. Um, this is the document overview, and um, you can see here that uh, it will show you where the application at is at in um, when you get when you submit it. So right now, you'll see that it's an application is in progress. Then, if you submit it, you'll be able to see that it was submitted, um, review in, in progress, and on and on. You'll see at each point where you where we are in the grant application um, in the back end of that. And then over here on the left hand side, um, these this is our, our menu, so to say. Um, at, fir at first, you'll see that we're just going to hit save and um, hit the next application or the next page button. But then when we get down to the actual budget um, summary, when we enter our budget, it's, it'll change a little bit. And I'll show you as we go along. So when we initially start, we're going to go ahead um, and come over here again to the left and click on the cover page. We'll review the information here at the top. Um, we'll enter a main contact person. And um, this is all populated in the back end. And then a second, you can enter a secondary contact person, um, but this is not required. And so I'll enter my first contact and I will hit save. And having the worst time here with this little thing that I can move it. I can't. Well, right here, this button um, says next form. Um, let me see one second. Oh, okay, we can see a little bit here. So we'll, I'm going to just go ahead and continue. Um, so we'll go ahead and click next form, or you could navigate right here to the assurance and certifications. Um, I'll just go ahead and use the navigation since you can't see it. Just again, make sure that you are hitting the save button. It does auto save, um, but just so you don't get too far into entering too much information. And for some reason it, it crashes and does not save. So we do recommend continue to hit the save button after each page. Um, so we'll review the assurances and certifications. These are not entered yet because this is the test system. Um, but you can see over here on the navigation, the navigation pane, now that the cover page is um, completed, there's a green check, check mark. If you did not enter the main contact um, or the required fields, you'll see a red X and um, you will get a notification. And I'll show you that in a moment. Um, so we're gonna go ahead, um, assurance and certifications, we don't need to hit save. 
because we're not entering any information, we're just viewing. Let's see, and the one time I say that it auto saves. So let me go ahead and back here and click save. I just, I guess, rule of thumb, always click save. Okay, and then um, we'll review the important information. We will hit save, and then we'll continue on to next form. Okay, and here we just have a question asking um, robot, robotics competition program grant, would you like to apply? So you either check do not apply or apply now, but of course we know we are ready to apply. So we'll click apply now, save, and next form. So Ashley, just quickly, what's important about that for everyone to note is that by clicking apply now, if you noticed on the side that Ashley was talking about being your menu of options, the budget pages weren't there before. And as soon as she clicked apply now and save, the budget pages appeared. You will not be able to submit without a budget. So <laughs> make sure you're clicking that apply now if you're going to actually be submitting an application. Okay. Yes, thank you. That is a good thing to point out. Um, and so we, when we move on, uh, this non-pub payment information, you will only see that if you are a non-pub and you would just pull this um, address ID code out from um, in Sigma. And so again, you will only see that if you are a, a um, non-pub and the address ID includes no um, like alpha characters, it's just numeric. So if there is uh, an N or S in front of your address ID, please just do not include that, only put the numbers. So we're gonna enter that, save. Okay, so this is where we actually start filling out information. I think it's just a little easy till we get up to there. Um, and so now we're gonna start entering our, this is our team and partnership information like Amanda had spoke about, it's all on one page now. So we'll start by um, entering our first team. And again, you have to enter each team and I'll show you how to do that. Um, so we have robotics type. I am just going to choose FRC rookie. team number and then you'll choose uh, which building the team is associated with and just for training purposes I'm going to go ahead and choose this um, this building and um, I have 12 students participating on this team so then I'll go ahead and enter in the coaches information So I actually is entering that and note uh, two things. One, number of students is different. That's a new question. Um, it is just an estimate for now. You will be uploading your team roster. Again, we know that changes over the season. My own son participated in the team for half the semester and then was like, yeah, mom, this is not my thing. <laughs> so he, he dropped off, unfortunately. Um, but so give us your best estimate of students that are going to be participating in the team that helps us communicate back to the legislature the number of team uh, number of students participating again that always helps us with additional funding asks or just communicating the impact of these grant dollars across the state um, and you can always go back in after the uh, grant has been submitted an award and do a, a bud or a, an application amendment to change those numbers if you want. Um, so that is a new thing. And then also, did you notice that as Ashley started to type, it came up with her whole name and phone number and email address. The system is starting to recognize our data and save it. So if you are entering multiple applications or multiple teams and you all have the same team co or the coach, it's going to get faster at apply, uh, entering this information. So you're not going to have to type it 20 times. You can just start with an A, boom, Ashley's name's there. You click it, and it's going to auto-fill it for you. Yes, thank you for that. Um, now, circling back around, um, this is 
uh, where Amanda was talking about, where you're going to be hitting all those boxes and checking everything. Um, this is where this is this is where this is located. Um, so a coach stipend, you can either say yes or no. That's totally up to the district. Um, we do verify it in the end that um, each coach that it, the coach stipends are given out correctly. Um, so just keep in mind the whole um, one coach per building um, that we had talked about earlier when you're filling out the application. Um, here, we're just saying that yes, that we are going to provide 25% of the total robotics competition program am amount. Um, yes, we can provide 25% if we have team advances. Um, will you either, will you offer school credits, elective credits or digital badges? You can say yes, no, or maybe. If yes or maybe, which are you going to offer? You select which ones you're going to offer. I'm going to hit no for right now. And then we're at our sponsor information. And then here is where we can enter um, the sponsor information. And again, even if all of the teams have the same sponsor information, you do have to fill it out each time. Um, but it should, it should, um, like Amanda said, start to remember what, what you're entering. And then we will choose sponsor type is it's either a business and nonprofit. Let me adjust my screen so you can hopefully see a little better. So uh, we have business, nonprofit, higher education, or technical school. So you'll just go ahead and pick uh, which option um, matches up with your sponsor information. So we um, will hit save because I have multiple teams, so I need to add another team. It is very, very important that you hit save before you hit add, because if you hit add, it'll just clear out all of that information that you just entered. So I hit save, we can see that the check mark is there. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit add, and it'll clear out all of this information. And then we can add our other team. So I will quickly put this out. And I don't know if we have any other information that we um, need to talk about, Amanda, while I quickly do this. So we had one question come in the chat and they wanted to see the um, robotics program type again. Okay. And this I will. Is thing where I'm, oh yeah. Cause can you do an other? Cause that's new too. Okay. So there are also some error checks in here. If you were to anywhere there's a red asterisk, miss something and try to save, you're gonna get a little notice that says, oh, you missed something. And what's really cool again about Nexus versus um, Megs is that list of error checks um, are gonna provide you a link. So if you click on it, it's gonna take you, boom, right to that particular section and it's highlighted red, you can see there where Ashley has got the sponsorship information um, that highlights it for you and it will direct you to that section on the page so that you know what needs to be fixed. Yes, that's, that's really a good one um, because on the main screen, it'll show you all of the different links to you know all of your errors. So it's very easy to find what it is you missed so you're not searching multiple pages looking for something. Um, so let me go ahead and just fill the second team out real quick here. Um, and they wanted to see the sponsor type. Is that what you had said, Amanda? Okay, so uh, we have the option for business nonprofit, higher education institute, and technical school. Did you say that there should be an other? Under sponsor? No, um, sorry, I meant the team, robotics team type. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. So this is our full list right here. We do have an other um, located down here. So if you click on other, you would be, thank you for catching that, Amanda. Um, you'll be able to type in which program uh, provider that you're working with. So I could type in um, Nate right here. And so I'll keep that as other. 
And then again, we filled out all the information and then um, again, hit save. So it saves your other team. And you'll see that these errors should clear out because we fixed the issues. Okay, and oh, I missed one down there. Also, while she's fixing those, no over on the menu page, it then gave you a little circle with an exclamation point. So there's a lot of visual uh, cues within the system uh, that help point you out to, okay, it's a checkbox, I'm done, move on. Um, then you notice there's a little file folder now for team and partnership page. So you can click the arrow and it's gonna give you a list of all the teams now. So you can go, back and forth from your teams and it's going to list them all there for you. We didn't have that before. It was this drop down and you only saw one and it was really confusing. So this is another neat visual. And then when there is that um, error check and something needs fixed, it gives you the exclamation point here and it's going to give you the warning text as well with direct links. So though it's delayed, <laughs> it seems Nexus is going to have some pretty neat features when it's ready to go. Yes, I do like this new feature though of all the team and partnership information. And so you can quickly navigate between all of um, all of your teams. It makes it so much faster. Mm -hmm. um, so again, remember to hit save. And then if you to continue adding your teams, you just keep hitting add and then save, add and then save until you have all of your teams listed. So I'm gonna go ahead now and just hit next form. Ashley, there's some additional questions in the chat. Okay. Um, I'm trying to make sure I captured all of them. There is, is there a document or a list where badges and elective credits are available? Um, you'll need to work with program providers on the issuance of digital badges, and you'll need to work with counselors in your school district on the elective credit aspect. There are some teams across our school districts across the state that are already providing the elective credit. Um, so again, I think the program providers know which schools they are and they can help create a network to share that kind of information. That's not something that is issued by the state. So that's that question in response. Um, our digital badge is something we make up. Um, the program providers can help you either create them um, or have them already created for you and they'll show you how you issue them. Um, you can make badges for other things, but that's a whole nother technical assistance. <laughs> so we're not gonna talk about that today. Um, let's see, if you click no on the question about offering digital badges or credits, does it then exclude you from the application? Absolutely not. Um, it's just helping us understand what's going on in the field and how we can support. If there's a ton saying no, we can then reach out to them and say, well, why not? What, what can we do to support you to make this an option for your district? That criteria is only a willingness. So that's why I say that one's a little wishy-washy. It's not a, a stick that we're gonna use. This is a way for the department to support the field. Um, so that's all that one is. It's just a point of information for additional support. Um, let's see, there was another one. They so, oh, so Janelle, she wins a prize today. I don't know what that is, but she noticed actually in the drop down for sponsorship, there's only the three, and we also include an individual. So let's say I win the lotto and I want to donate some money to a team. I could be an individual partner because I love the robotics program and I'm now providing funding, or I'm going to be the mentor, or not a mentor, but I'm going to. Um, be the individual that goes in and gives my time. So yes, an individual for legislation purposes, it's got to be one of the three, but we did add in an individual. So um, we just need to double check and work with the programmers to make sure individual gets added to that drop down is one of the fixes. Um, and then the last question that came in is uh, 99H provides fun for Science Olympiad. Um, yes, you did see that. In years past, it was specific in legislation for only non-public schools, but we did receive guidance from Senator Schmidt, who sponsored this bill and um, is now the chair of the K-12 subcommittee, that this grant um, is open to all, pro all robotics programming. So you can submit that under other as well. It's not listed in the dropdown because it wasn't one of our primary program providers, 
it can be a, a new program provider. So yes, you can include that. It is it actually it might be on the drop down because it was open to non pubs in the past. All right, that was all the questions. Ashley, back. To oh, perfect. Thank you so much. That was very quick. Um, okay. So after we do the team and partnership information again, we hit um, save and then we click next form and it takes us to the budget summary. Um, you're not gonna see anything listed up here because we haven't entered anything yet, but you do wanna scroll down and enter your contact information for your business op office representative and project contact person. Um, so you'll enter that information, hit save. And then I'm not gonna click next form this time um, because I don't want to go to the budget detail um, tab just yet. Um, so let's go ahead. We'll ignore that for right now because it cannot be zero. Um, so it's waiting for us to actually enter something. So we're going to go over here to the add budget item. And then this is where we're going to start um, entering our budget items. So uh, up at the top here, you can see uh, team number. We'll go ahead and select our team number. The robotics program type, I know, um, which is, we did that on the last screen, but we do have to enter it here as well. Ashley, that's one of the fixes for the programmers too. So as soon as you oh, click, okay. click the team number, it'll auto populate that. Oh, um, perfect. Okay, thank you for that. Um, And then I, I'm assuming this one is yep. an error right here. So don't mind that other fields that will be removed. Um, and then this is where we are going to come down and we'll select our appropriate function codes. Amanda's well more versed in this than I. So I will have her make up um, a, some sort of situation that may, you may possibly um, want to use you know, in the future. Uh, so Amanda, go ahead. Yep. Go ahead and click 111 for elementary school. OK. Um, you're going to, this is for your support award. Okay. And you'll put the detail in. So your support award for your elementary school is um, Lego League kits or first through third grade. Okay. And then it's gonna be a purchase service or yeah, sorry, supplies and materials. You got okay. it. You don't need me. <laughs> Don't know the max off the top of my head. Just put 1500 in. Okay. This is just pretend you will all know your budget um, items better than we do. We are guessing. So go ahead and click save. Okay. Yep. And then this is the same as the team um, page. So we're going to enter multiple different um, budget items in here. So we'll hit save. And then after we hit save, then we'll hit add. Because again, if you just hit add, it will clear out what was already there. So we'll just scroll back up and start it all over again. Um, so if we look, oh. Yeah, let's add another budget item for this one. Um, again, like I said, that'll be auto-populated so that it's not a burden on you in completing the application. Um, go ahead and do, do these aren't going to be right but how about we do summer school okay 119 okay okay so it's still support award and we're gonna pay for a uh, um, summer camp Summer robotic camp. Okay. And then again, we'll enter that um, how much we're um, applying for in the supplies and materials. Save. And then we'll add another one and show yep. you how to do for the coach stipend. Yep. Let's, yeah, I should say, let's do one more. Yep. Um, so now if we look over here, we can see all of the budget items that we've already added, which makes it really nice when you're sitting here filling out uh, multiple budget items for multiple teams. Um, you can quickly, quickly glance over to see what um, you have already completed. 
Yeah, I would also recommend in your budget detail, uh, including um, just the, the, those notations, though it's got the team number here, we're still playing around with what that looks like. So just to help you keep track of each of the items. Um, yep, so actually scroll down to, it's gonna be a 200 category. Um, not improvement of instruction, staff and personnel services. It's not right, cause that would be PD, but we'll say stipend. Okay. And then you're gonna put the uh, coaching, um, coaching stipend divided by three, one primary coach and two mentors and whatever the total is. And then under either salaries and benefits, you're gonna put that in. Or if it's a contractor, then you'd put it under purchase services. And I am seeing some chats come in here. The system is not advanced enough yet, Peter. So the question was, will the system catch if you put FRC and then choose elementary by mistake? That's going to be where uh, the MDE review team is manually looking at that. Um, so if you make a mistake, you make a mistake. It's not a big deal. We'll just be sending that budget back to you to update that, to fix that. Yes, Janelle, this will be a chore for those that have uh, 35 plus teams, <laughs> but it will start to create some better financial records for this grant program that can then be used to analyze for that return on investment piece that I was sharing. Um, and really help us to better identify the actual costs of some of the programs and what school districts need so that we could either ask for more money or adjust the budget or funding structure to be more equitable. Um, let's see, Jennifer. So we have to work with our teams to get the items they are going to purchase with their support award. That's a lot more work. Um, it is, or you can do really generic right now and put in, um, the line item. So you can have just one line item for support, one line item for stipend and say your support is lumped all together. So if we're going to ask for $9,000. I'm going to put this in all as purchase services. $5,000 is registration. And these are all of our other supplies and materials. It should be detailed out. That is best practice. Work with your but a business office to address that, um, but you could lump it all into one. Uh, Laura's asking, is comp competition mandatory to receive funding? Wondering how to do this. Yes. So competitions are a requirement of the grant. You must compete. You could run a summer program, um, summer camp that is allowing your students to uh, like I said, develop those skills so that they can compete. So you just have to make sure that there's some mechanism in there that is going to get those students ready and prepared to compete at, at a competition. And you can work with the program providers to identify which competition you're going to compete in. Yep, and VEX has a long list of specific activities that qualify as competing. And we've, yeah, even looked at some online competitions because of COVID this year that, um, or in last year that also qualify as competitions. And all of our program providers are aware of what those are. So they, you can work directly with them. I think those were all the questions in the chat. Awesome, thank you so much for that. Um, before I, I, I moved on too quickly because we also need to, when we're entering, um, the salaries we we need to do salaries and benefits and how many full-time employees or how many total hours so uh i just wanted to backtrack and go over that again so um i'm going to go ahead and hit save and then we'll see that we have three budget items in our tree located on the left hand side and we can easily navigate between the three of them so um I hit save and I'm going to quickly come back up here to the budget summary.
And Ashley, after that, I wanted um, to highlight one additional thing on the add budget item page. Okay. Um, and then it, if we come over here to uh, budget summary, you can see that we have, oh, okay, I guess that's, that's different. Um, you can see the, all of the funding source and sources and how much we have entered. And it's just an easy, quick view to view uh, what everything that's entered. Um, and then you said go back to add budget item. Okay, and then what did, what was it you wanted to point out? Um, that there's a local agency share checkbox. So if you also wanted to include in your budget what your 25% match is, you can enter that in as local agency share. We are not requiring that this year in the budget, but it does help us know how much additional, like you've already agreed to the requirement. So that's the bare minimum, the compliance piece, you've said you've done 25%. But if you want to keep a record of who is giving you money for this grant specifically and keep it in the state system, you can enter it into your budget here. So you're gonna fill out all the same uh, fields, but when you click local agency share, then that is going to tell us that that money is coming into your budget from someplace else for this particular program. And within your detail, you're gonna to wanna to say, so for these summer robotics camp, summer robotics program provided by funding from the MyStem network, region nine, region whatever, or um, grant funding from Ford or what have you. So enter that detail in, in the detail section and keep it. And then your budget will actually sort out, this is how much is grant funded and here's how much we're receiving. So some of our school districts are getting more than 25% match. And that is a great thing for us to communicate to the legislature about the, the community in the collaboration that is happening in this space to provide our students with those programs. But again, not a requirement, but it is an option for you if you'd like to use it this year. Thank you. Um, so, and moving on, um, we are not gonna go over capital outlay that's in there by error, so that will be removed. Um, we are, Hit save. I must have made a change, so it's letting me know. We're almost there. I did a time check. <laughs> We're getting close to the end. <laughs> okay, and um, this is where uh, spending plan will be removed. Um, this is where we're going to go ahead and upload our team roster. So we'll just select and brow browse like you normally would. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and upload. You no, know, their parents drew our hair. Oh my gosh! Hey, Daryl. I think Imagine it like that. You're muted. We can hear you. Oh, thank you. Okay, so we'll go ahead and upload that. Um, oh. I'm just going to go ahead and do this real quick. Again, this isn't required, but it's going to make me add this so that I can save with no errors. Okay, um, state of Michigan att attachments here, you don't need to do anything with that. I think it's going to make me put something in because this is going to be removed, isn't it, Amanda? No, that's for us at the state. So let's say you send us an email um, with a request of some sort, we might save it in this file. So we'll upload it and add it. Again, this is just an electronic record um, for anything that the department wants to share with you, with the district particularly, that is specific to the district. Okay, thank you. It will um, most likely always be blank. <laughs> Uh, so at this point, we are done with the application. You do have to scroll down past these tools and you can minimize them um, to just kind of get them out of the way. And so down at the very bottom, we can either choose to submit the application or cancel the application completely. 
So I'm going to go ahead and submit the application. Um, let's go ahead and enter. And it takes us back to this uh, document overview page. And now you can see that the application has been submitted. And so when it moves, um, again, you'll see the progress right here through this table. Uh, do we have any questions regarding this, the whole uh, Nexus system uh, before we move on? I know we're running, um, we're running behind on time. So I do want to be respectful of everyone's time here and try and get everything wrapped up. Um, as, as well, you can reach out to me or Anne Marie at any time if you have any questions while going through the application process. Do we have any questions coming in? Yep, there's two questions. In the past, they were able to upload a combined roster document for all teams. You will continue to do that. They should not be separate. It should still be all one, one roster. Um, and then the other question, what are the odds of teams being able to upload an Excel file of their budget instead of doing the individual item upload through the website? Um, the likelihood is good for the future. Um, we have been informed by the Nexus team that is one of the features that is coming, but because there's been so many bugs with the system, we've got to focus on the primary content first um, or the, the base package, this is the base package. So in years to come, there's a higher likelihood than there is for this year. So this year it's none. <laughs> there's no likelihood we'll be able to do that this year, unfortunately. Um, let's see, there's a couple more coming in. Uh, will the list of recipients identify how much each team in the district is getting? Um, I'm not exactly sure what that question means, Gail. We can connect offline and I will get you an answer for that. Is the budget per team or per district? So you will create one total district budget, but you enter by team. So every line item, every team has to have line items, at least one line item for the stipend and one line item for the support award. Um, let's see, can you fill out the application as a teacher or has, oh, so level fives, this question came up earlier. I apologize, we didn't address it out loud. Level five still initiate the application. Level fours can go in and add and save everything. Then the level five still submits. So you'll be working with the same individuals that you probably worked with last year in your business office and your superintendent. Okay, those are all the questions in the chat, Ashley. And that was the demo. So I'll jump back in and share my screen and just say, as you complete the application and you submit, your level five submits that uh, application, they are assuring the accuracy of the information in there. Who are the staff participating? What um, the legislative statute requirements were and what the uh, MDE staff said um, and we already just addressed the district level five. So we are to the point now, um, we have some of our robotics programmers or programming providers on the call with us today. They're going to have a few minutes each to share with us what their mission and program timelines, costs and contact information. Actually don't share your contact information because it's on the last slide. So they will get it. We don't need to waste time on that. Um, but I will turn it over first to Barb and Jason from Square One, because I see them on my screen. <laughs> so we'll start with them, and then we will move to First Robotics and Vex and Mate. All right, Barb. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, and congratulations on your new job and all that great stuff. Uh, we're excited to have another year of our innovative vehicle design programming um, that is now uh, you are able to access state funding to help provide that. Um, Square One is a Michigan-based, Michigan-focused um, nonprofit educational organization, and so we offer a, a broad array of projects, um, everything from elementary, middle, and high school um, that are good 
um, especially entry level projects um, for your school or your district, your students, um, that you can, you can choose between. We try to provide a variety of things that are right sized. They're affordable and flexible projects. Um, so our big philosophy is, of course, that you know every project, uh, you know, should be open ended. Um, a, a working solution is a a good solution. We want these programs to be student led. Um, there, there's not outside uh, assistance allowed. All of our programs, the intellectual property needs to belong specifically to the students and the work is completed by the students. Um, we do hold um, our competitions in the spring. We have uh, an outstanding underwater robotics program um, and my partner, Jason, will talk about that in just a minute. Um, we'll be offering um, a, a competition here in the lower peninsula and then also one in the upper peninsula this year. And the same thing for our uh, wheeled projects. Um, so I have dropped two videos in, in the chat here that we encourage you to take a look at. It will fill you in a little bit more on, on what we offer. We try to provide a really holistic experience for you. So we offer um, this network of educators. We have resource for you and uh, we'll, we'll hold your hand along the way. Um, but we are super excited to engage you in our real world relevant projects. And Jason, I'll turn it over to you real quick to tell them what the choices are. Thanks, Barb, and uh, thanks everybody for joining us today. It's good to see you. Uh, so we do have uh, five programs. They are our Innovative Vehicle Design Programs, uh, IVD for short, um, and they are, come in all sizes and all levels of complexity to meet just about any educational setting. Um, our autonomous IVD is based on a Power Wheels toddler Jeep. Uh, so two students start with the, the stock toddler Jeep and put in hardware and software to make it an autonomous vehicle. Uh, to do parallel parking and platooning and all the things that autonomous vehicles do. Uh, in our full-scale IVD, students design and build um, electric go-karts with a focus on energy efficiency and energy management. In mini IVD, students start with a one-tenth scale RC car, uh, and the focus there is on testing and validation, uh, and then really optimizing the vehicle. So they look at a variety of uh, vehicle components, they change out tires, they change shock fluids, they change gear ratios, and see how that affects vehicle performance. With the V2X IVD, that's a small, like, shoebox size robot. Um, and it, it, the competition is much like autonomous IVD. Uh, it's just a little bit easier project and a smaller package uh, can be done in smaller spaces. And then as Barb mentioned, our underwater IVD uh, is completely separate from the wheeled programs, but uh, you're designing and building an underwater robot uh, to complete a variety of missions at the bottom of a pool. Uh, so it's pretty unique and pretty cool program. Uh, as Barb said, all of the competitions happen in the spring. We kick off programs in the fall, competitions in the spring. Uh, we are short on time, so I'll just leave it at that. Uh, if you have any questions, certainly feel free to reach out uh, to Barb or myself. We'd be happy to, to provide some more detail. Great. Thank you, Jason and Barb. Gail, I'll turn it over to you to share a little bit about FIRST Robotics. Okay. And Amanda, are we um, shooting to finish in one minute, or are we going to give everyone time? Um, I would like to give everyone time. If you do need to leave, we will completely understand. Um, but if everyone could hang on for another five to 10 minutes, uh, just to hear from all of our program providers, that would be greatly appreciated. Okay, thank you. Uh, First Robotics has been around for a long time. We've been growing our programs. We now start in pre-K and go all the way through 12. Uh, we, have, we have a pre-K program early and late um, elementary, then we have a middle school and a high school program. Each of those programs offers events all across the state, multiple, multiple of them. You can do more than one. First Robotics is the only one that requires two. Uh, that is our season um, in order to advance. The robots grow in complexity. You can start anywhere in the continuum. Um, it's all about just inspiring passion in our kids. This is a workforce development program at its heart. And the goal is to get kids passionate about pursuing a career in um, STEM. So we offer $80 million in college scholarships. 
we do work with companies. They work side by side, at least at the high school level in particular. Um, the whole idea is the networking and learning really to see what a career looks like from the inside. And so the companies are excited to join our kids because they get a real jump on the competition and get to start to select who they want to join their company early. The kids have opportunities for internships, scholarships, and again, with the $80 million in college scholarships that we offer, it, we're just, we love this program. Tammy, do you have anything that you'd like to add? Um, sure. I'd just like to say that, you know, our programs scale up with the size of the student. We do start with um, PK and go all the way through high school. And each program becomes a little bit more, a little bit more to ultimately the students go right through the pipeline and are amazing on their high school FRC programs. So, um, yeah, give us a try if you're not already on board first. We'd love to have you. And we do have a remote and physical options available so we can meet you wherever you can play. Great, thanks Tammy and Gail. Uh, Mike Martis from REC Foundation. Yes, I'd like to introduce Brandy Bollinger. Brandy Bollinger is the new event engagement manager for Michigan and she will be taking this on. Go Brandy. Hello, hi, as Mike said, I am the team engagement manager for the state of Michigan and I work for the REC Foundation. The REC Foundation is the nonprofit that handles um, all of the competitions and assists teams for VEX Robotics. Um, so VEX Robotics, what is it? It is a very affordable and sustainable and scalable um, robotics competition that is very student centered. So Students that are on teams with the REC Foundation are really involved in the engineering process, the design process, the programming, all of the teamwork with just the assistance of adults. So um, me as a former teacher, I really like VEX Robotics uh, because it comes with a full curriculum that you can use both in and out of the classroom for extension activities, um, planned activities. For me, it's really great as um, activities for a substitute teacher if you have to be out of the classroom. Um, we offer the curriculum for free, which is fantastic. Um, we offer team and event support as teams grow and want to host their own events. We do have dedicated staff members that help run the events. As far as the actual um, curriculum goes, there's the classroom curriculum, there's educator certifications and professional development that comes along with all of your VEX curriculum. Our approved competitions for this year include in-person competitions, if you'd like to participate in a tournament, a league, or a skills challenge. There's also live remote tournaments, which are a really cool way for you to digitally compete alongside teams from anywhere in the world. And online challenges, which are a series of um, challenges that you can do from marketing to catting. And then there's also our classroom competition for teachers who are in self-contained classrooms that can do these. So we offer programs starting VEX Go in the pre-K realm all the way through elementary school with VEX 123 and VEX IQ. Uh, VEX Robotics competition is available for middle school and high school. And then if you choose to continue with VEX after that, you can participate in VEX U or VEX Work Cell. So one of the great things about VEX is that it is flexible. So if you have uh, smaller teams of elementary and middle school, you can actually combine those into one team and allow your elementary students to play up. And same thing with middle school and high school, you can combine those two teams together and have your middle schoolers play up. So the flexibility of being able to combine those is great. And then my one of my other favorite parts is the fact that the teams are really small so you get more students having their hands on robots. That's all I've got. Great, thank you, Mike. And welcome Brandy to the Michigan team. We're excited to have you. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> the Mate Rove team is our newest competition that was just um, brought to our attention. And unfortunately they couldn't have representation on the call today, but you can find more information about them uh, on our website with the link to their website and you can connect with Jill Zander. Um, she is their contact and I'm sure she'll be able to share tons of information like all of our other program providers. Same with Square One um, because that's been a program more yeah. towards non-public schools. We don't have a representative on the call today for that group as well, but you absolutely can find their information on the website. 
that is all we have on our program providers. If you have additional questions, please reach out to Ashley. She's your primary contact for all things the grant, MDE's grant related. If you have program questions, you can reach out to any of um, the folks that were on the call here today. And that that is everything. Um, so I greatly appreciate all of you attending today and staying a little bit later to hear from our program providers. I've had an amazing time the last couple of years watching this program grow from one program provider only offering to high school students to this huge, robust, uh, just amazing community of folks providing high quality STEM education to students here in Michigan. So I wish you all the best of luck in this year's competition in the grant program. Um, and I'm just gonna leave it at that. So I will stay on with Ashley for a few minutes if anyone has other questions uh, to continue to support you. But other than that, have an amazing evening. Thank you for that, Amanda. I know that you will be greatly missed by all the districts and the program for the providers.